Well, welcome back to the Life Journey Production Studios. My name is Keith. Thank you so much for joining me in this final video on this Hyperdeck series. Thank you for subscribing and liking these videos. If they're helping you out, please share them with other people that you know that are struggling with their Hyperdecks. And maybe you're not, and you're just wanting to make sure you're fully using your Hyperdeck. This is the place to be. Or maybe you just wanted to learn how to do motion graphics. We're gonna be diving into After Effects here. That's where I make my motion graphics. But let me just remind you that if you did something like a font in Adobe Premiere, you could just create a green background and then you could key that out using your Luma key. And that would work as well to play an animated graphic inside your HyperDeck and make it a part of your presentation. And that would be for another video here in the HyperDeck series. But this is going to be a focus on how to create a alpha channel graphic in that's animated in After Effects. So let me switch to uh, this view here. And we're going to bring up After Effects here. Um, and I have an icon right here on the bottom of my screen. So this should open After Effects. And again, you can subscribe to Adobe Premiere. After Effects is part of a big package you can get. I think it's about $60 a month if you want everything that they have or there's other packages that would just include Adobe Premiere and After Effects and things like that. I would suggest you have Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Audition, and After Effects if you were gonna have a package of products because that gives you everything that you're gonna pretty much need to do what we're talking about. If you wanna do some high-end 3D graphics or do web design or some of the other things, then you may wanna integrate some of the other software. So. We're gonna create a new project. I want to do a new composition inside that project. And I want it to be a HDTV 1080p 29.9 frames a second. That's just what I normally use in the studio, but you could change this to other frame rates right here. But that's what I'm gonna use. And I wanna make sure all these settings are correct and title it motion graphic. Alpha render. So I think our spelling's right. We'll hit OK. It'll open up the palette. You want to make sure you're zoomed all the way out. So that is shift or control minus on the on the PC. I think it's command minus on the Mac. So there I can see my whole board. Um, I have transparency on that's set right down here. So I can turn, oops, that's not it. It's right here. I can turn that transparency on and off. So if you'd rather work with black, you can start like this or gray, whichever you wanna call it. Up here, I'm gonna drop in a font. Um, I'm gonna drop it right here. But what I really do like about having this on is I can see exactly where I want this. So we're gonna call this animated lower third. And I definitely want it on the screen. So I'm gonna pull this up. I wanna see what it looks like. And I need to make a little correction here. Go back to my T icon, change that capital H to a lower H. And that's my colors. I can change colors right here. So if I have this highlighted, then I could change to white if I wanted to. I could change to blue if I wanted to. And I can add other things here as well. I can outline clicking right here. So if I wanted to add a black outline, I can. We're gonna go with my colors and go yellow. And a black outline. And I could increase or decrease that black outline right here. But just for the sake of this right now, we're gonna go like that. I wanna see where it's landing on the screen and the size. So I'm gonna hold down shift and this top arrow with my mouse, hold down my mouse, my click on this click on it, then hold down my shift and resize it. So you click on the top arrow first, hold down your mouse button, then shift, and then you can change the size of this. And I want it to end up right here. So we're gonna shrink this window down by grabbing right here. And then here's all the settings for that layer. I only have one layer graphic. I can add other layers. I could add a box down here. Um, that would be for a different tutorial. I wanna open up all the options here. I wanna open up transitions. I'm not gonna do anything crazy with the text, but I could. I could change the path. I could change the, the um, options here, but we're just gonna work right now with the transform 
um, settings. I want to I want to activate all of these, but I want to pull forward before I activate them. So I'm going to pull forward right here to five seconds. Then I'm going to activate all of these because that's where I want it to lie when I get five seconds in here. So now I can pull this arrow back to the beginning of this clip. This is just like an animated video clip. And now I can say, I don't even want this here. I want this completely off the screen. In fact, I want to pull it way up here, just off the screen. And it creates icons along there. And now if I hit the space bar, which is going to render it, it's going to fly down to that spot and stop, right? So that's cool, but not cool enough. Um, we got to add something else to this. So what I want to do is I want to go right here and right about here, I'd like this thing to spin once. So I'm going to click on rotation and I'm going to spin it once. And let's see what happens now. Yeah, it popped in the side. That's cool. We'll just leave that like that. We're going to look at it without the transparency on one time. And I'm just shooting from the hip here. And it's popping in from the bottom. That's kind of cool. So we'll use that. So now we don't want it this long. I would really like it to replay. If I wanted to sit here for a while, I'd come down here. I'm going to pull the timeline bar back. Let's pull it back to 10 seconds. And let's pull the render box back to 10 seconds. Let's render it one time again. And once it's all green, which it is right now, it's all animated and ready to be exported. Now we're going to look at how to export this with an alpha channel. So I'm going to grab my disk out of my HyperDeck. It's right here. I'm going to put it into my computer. And I have a OC, o OWC white Thunderbolt dock. And so we'll stop this by hitting the space bar. I'm going to go into my disk here. And I'm going to get rid of these two files, which I did as practice files. Delete those. And I'll close that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go up to File Export. I want to export to my Add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. Again, this is an After Effects. You can see my other ones up here. They've already been exported. I want to do this one. I want to export it to my SD card right here. Click Save. I want to make sure I render it with an alpha channel. So I'm going to click right here on the down arrow. And I have Apple ProRes 444 with alpha channel except click or clicked. And that's the best one to use because it will play in the HyperDeck. I use it all the time. That's when I'd set. You could also go down here and use this Apple ProRes 444XQ, but I'm just going to stay right here. I'm going to hit play, and it's now rendering that file real quickly and then putting it on my HyperDeck. It's done already because I have a fast laptop. I'm going to take the chip out. I'm going to put that inside my HyperDeck. Switch to this view. Plug that in, it's going to go green. Then you have those clips right here. Let's play it. And there you show it flying in and around and down. So we know it's working. So that's ready to go. So we're going to close this software. We're going to close this. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. And nope, I'm just going to throw this file to the wind. And um, we're back in the software here. And so we have two clips. We have my other motion graphic that I've used in the past. And you can see that right now on the HyperDeck. And now we've added this new one. So we're going to queue it. And we know that we've already assigned this graphic in the last video to my downstream key one. And so if I hit on, let's see if it, if it rolls. And there you go. You have it rolling. Let's turn this graphic off. And now I have it rolling into place right here in my lower thirds. I turned my other graphic off. And when this is done, I can click um, off on the software right here. Turn that key off. Turn this key back on or vice versa. I can hit it on again and it's going to auto roll because I have my HyperDeck set 
in auto roll. And again, where you do that is in these settings right here in the bottom left of your software. Let's change to the bigger view here. So right down here under settings at the very bottom left of the screen, you turn auto roll on right here. And then anytime you cut to your hyperdeck, whatever you have on there is going to auto roll, hit save. And anytime I turn this on, that graphic is going to auto roll and you're going to see it fly down here, get this out of the way. And there it's rolling. So that's going to roll. It's going to play for the 10 seconds. And, um, there you go. So that's how you make a graphic in After Effects. You render it with an alpha channel. It's not complicated. Other software, you'll have to be able to render it. You could also render it, it with a green background if you don't have something that can create an alpha channel. And you can create a transparent graphic. But again, it's not going to create an alpha channel. You have to be able to render it with an alpha channel in order to do that. So that's how to get alpha graphics designed in After Effects. That's also how to export them into your disk, put it in the HyperDeck and play them using whatever key you want to assign the HyperDeck to. If you have auto roll on, as soon as you turn that key on, it's going to roll. If you don't have auto roll, auto roll set, you'll have to hit play to get that animated graphic to play. So that's a reason to have auto roll on all the time. If you're using your HyperDeck for animated graphics, or if you even want a video to roll as soon as you cut to it. And so I hope that helps you. This is the end of our HyperDeck series. We will be doing more series on the HyperDeck, talking more about it. There's other videos here on my channel that I'm going to add to the end of this playlist on how to uh, record on the HyperDeck. I give you an example of 4K um, 422 recorded right to the HyperDeck. So you can take a look at that footage and I rendered it 4K um, up to YouTube and you can see if you would like to use your HyperDeck to record as well. So that's it in this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, my name is Keith and we'll see you in the next video here on Life Journey Production Studios. Yeah.